It is early morning and the thrill of the chase begins as three men scramble into their 4x4. Dime, Alexandra and Yogi have been trapping since 2010, but they are not your ordinary trappers. No Bowie knives in their gear to skin their prey. Now their prey is not really a prey. It is a majestic royalty in distress that they rust to assist. The Lynx. The elusive knight errant whose lands are being steadily invaded and plundered by people. The Balkan Lynx is a subspecies of the Eurasian Lynx, which inhabits the region of the Balkans. An extremely territorial and solitary carnivore, each wandering male claims a vast territory covering around 350 square kilometers that often extends across the borders of the small Balkan countries. Being the most endangered of all the lynx populations, it has warranted the Balkan Lynx Recovery Program. Uh, the Balkan Lynx Recovery Program is a transboundary conservation initiative that aims at safeguarding the critically endangered Balkan lynx. Dime, Alexandra and Georgi belong to the Macedonian Ecological Society. They have been working with the Society for the Protection and Preservation of Natural Environment in Albania for many years, coordinated by Euronature from Germany and Cora from Switzerland. So one of the first actions when starting the Balkan Links Recovery Program was to search for partners and there to build up the capacity in large carnivore uh, monitoring. A few uh, young uh, students were chosen and they were trained partly in Switzerland and partly also in the range countries in uh, Macedonia and Albania. In 2013 they were joined by colleagues from the Centre for Protection and Research of Birds and National Parks in Montenegro as well as by Finch and Environmentally Responsible Action Group in Kosovo. Together these organisations make up the Balkan Lynx Recovery Team. In order to provide biological information and be collared with a radio or GPS device, the lynx first needs to be trapped. That way, scientists can later trace its positions, learn about its territory, hunting behavior, preferred habitats. They therefore set up box traps along a route that it is likely to travel. This is usually a place that the animal cannot circumvent, such as a narrow path on a steep slope, which increases the likelihood of it being captured. The box trap sends the biologist an SMS, alerting them that its doors have dropped. They are now on their way to one of their box traps, which had set off the alarm that caused all the commotion. Okay, so we just uh, recaptured the lynx Martin, which is, uh, which is great news. He has been gone for two and a half years and we had no contact from him, but now he's uh, inside the trap again and we are very excited about it. Biologists have very little time, about an hour and a half, while the lynx is asleep, to put on the GPS collar, take biometric measurements and draw blood for analysis. goes as uh, the following. We put the GPS uh, collar to the animal, which is the crucial thing. That's why we are doing this method, actually. And then we are taking biometric measures of the animal. So we are measuring the length of the lynx, we are weighting the lynx and see uh, how much it weighs. But we are also taking other uh, parameters, such as the distance of the canines, the tail length, uh, the distance of the genital aperture, but also uh, the ear length and the shoulder height, and etc. The local Macedonian and Albanian teams of biologists were the first to be equipped for and trained in wildlife monitoring techniques by their German and Swiss partners. By now, they have become so skilled that they are training their counterparts from Montenegro and Kosovo. Because the elusive lynx crisscrosses such a vast territory, the saying, looking for a needle in a haystack, is less vivid to these biologists than their routine of looking for a lynx on a mountain range. They therefore use camera traps to confirm the presence of the animals on a given territory. 
This method allows individual comparison, helping biologists to count individual lynxes in a given area. Such a census has major implications on further conservation work. A passing animal activates the equipment sensors which trigger the cameras. These photographs and recently videos have not only proved instrumental with regard to the lynx, but they have also led to various revelations about other animal species that would have otherwise remained in obscurity. This has helped the program's broader purpose as the biologists involved seek to gather information on their country's biodiversity. The Lynx's conquest of territories is fascinating. These maps show the territories of three lynxes based on the data from their GPS signals. They are territorial animals roaming over vast areas of suitable habitats. The first lynx to be captured in 2010 was named Marco. Riste, the second lynx, was captured in early 2012. When Marco disappeared from Mavrovol, his neighbor, Martin, first tagged in late 2012, soon claimed the southern section of Marco's territory. Based on the research so far, Mavrovol is the core area of the Balkan lynx. In fact, Mavrovo is the only territory where reproduction has been confirmed, which is why it is likely to be the source of the lynx population, as it seems that it is from here that individual lynxes colonize the region's other areas. The possibility remains that Mount Munella may host reproductive individuals, which is what the biologists in Albania have been hard at work to establish by camera trapping. From the camera trapping research that we have uh conducted so far, uh, we can say that the area holds a small subpopulation of four to five individuals of lynx. In this respect, this makes Munella very, very important for the survival of Balkan lynx, not only in Albania, but also in the whole, uh, the whole southwestern Balkan. The Macedonian team, on the other hand, is currently trying to establish whether there are individuals that have crossed into Albania and colonized Mount Munella. Volunteers have been involved to compare lynx photographs. They have so far counted more than 15 individuals in Mavrovol. At its outset, the first milestone activity of the Balkan lynx recovery program was the baseline survey. The biologist teams first tried to find any evidence that there actually were lynxes in given areas, such as lynx carcasses, photographs, even stuffed animals, ironically, were good news at the time. The region is particularly biodiverse along the borders between what was once Yugoslavia and the countries of the Warsaw Bloc and Albania. Ironically enough, this positive legacy of the Cold War, where these frontiers saw little human activity and nature reclaimed a few thousand miles long and relatively narrow stretch of land, has been termed the Balkan Green Belt. The Nature Conservation Programme seeks to establish a protected area network along this belt. The network is incomplete and management of the existing protected areas is insufficient. Euronatura and experts from PPNEA have contributed to the declaration of new protected areas, such as the Shebenik Jablanica National Park in 2008 and the Korab Koritnik Nature Park in 2011. Moreover, Montenegro declared Prokletia National Park in 2009, and Kosovo contributed in 2013 by declaring Bayeshka in Namuna National Park. These two along with the part in Albania now constitute a continuous protected area. The program is still working to see Macedonia's Shah Planina and Jablanica declared national parks. Uh, Shah Planina is one of the most important mountain ranges for the recovery of the Balkan lynx because it contains a large part of contiguous intact beach forest and it's connecting the Mavrovo National Park with uh, areas more in the north in Kosovo and Montenegro. So um, this mountain range, Shaplanina, is really a vital piece for the recovery of the Balkan lynx and therefore we would like to achieve that it is um, protected and declared as a national park.
I think um, the most important goal is to convince the local people that um, a national park is an opportunity, it's not an obstacle. So if we are talking about sustainable local development, we should promote activities like um, sustainable tourism, ecotourism for example, also as an economic activity for people. One of the most important things is to get the support of the local community and uh, try to, in a bottom-up approach, try to put pressure on the government to finally declare the area a national park. Moreover, Macedonia's Mavrovo National Park is also home to a variety of other animal and plant species. It seemed the perfect place for the Macedonian Ecological Society to train the rangers in camera Thanks to the Balkan Lynx Recovery Program, the local hunters and villagers in these four countries are coming on board, reporting sightings of the lynx or of any hallmarks of its presence. The program also seeks to involve local hunters and their associations to curb poaching and to promote the acceptance of the lynx. They attend conferences, which they use as opportunities to lobby on a higher political level. We, as European Commission, as you know, are extremely active uh, in promoting conservation of endangered species. And the Balkan lynx uh, is one of the large carnivore species uh, which are protected under European legislation. We have definitely low to that effect. And therefore, I think that in view of uh, even closer ties and in view of being a full member of uh, the European Union in the future, it is hugely desirable uh, that uh, this project goes ahead. This year's most exciting event was the photograph of a lynx in Kosovo taken by a camera truck only 10 kilometers from the border with Montenegro. After a, a long hard winter, just as spring was emerging, we had the great success of camera trapping the first Balkan lynx in Kosovo. And this is a huge part related to the, the expertise and the input that we got from our partners regionally and also abroad. Of all the threats to the Balkan lynx and wildlife in general, however, habitat destruction is among the greatest. All four countries have been keen to develop their long-neglected infrastructural networks and have not fully recognised the importance of their natural heritage. But this development has come at a high cost. Deforestation and illegal logging destroy wildlife's natural habitats. Road construction with poor environmental impact assessment fragments key animal routes and affects the animal's movement. The lack of law enforcement in the forest sector affects all the countries in the region, but it is particularly pronounced in Albania. Mount Menela, for example, is the last stronghold of the Balkan lynx in Albania. Rather than being a protected area, it is a major mineral extraction site and the forest is being destroyed at an unprecedented scale. The Balkan lynx, however, has miraculously survived here and the mountain still has a rich diversity of other mammals. Putting an end to habitat destruction, among other things, requires declaring protected areas. Of course, this would certainly affect the livelihoods of the local communities. In order to ensure their support and offer them alternative ways of sustainable economic development, a small grants program has been established. Locals can apply for funds to carry out sustainable projects, such as beehive production, chestnut fair, marking hiking trails and renovating mountain huts. About 20 such projects will be carried out in different regions of Macedonia, Albania and Montenegro. The local people love Valbona and they love the nature and, it, and they are more tied to place than people I, than any other people I've ever met in my life. So, so there's actually a big hope that people here could become fantastic shepherds of the area, even in the presence of increased economic possibility. Euronature says that they think setting up a ranger team could be a very small project, so we're going to try to begin training a, a local people to serve as rangers. We, we um, have applied for a grant 
to train Albania's first mountain rescue team, which would be great work for local people and incredibly useful not only for tourism, but also to bring this local community together and begin this sense of caretaking the national park, and we're going to start monitoring. This team of enthusiasts believes that a long-term solution to habitat destruction and any sustainable hope in the survival of the Balkan links must rely on awareness raising and on the education of the local population, especially of children, the future policymakers, biologists and politicians whose decisions will decide the fate of plant and animal life. What this program feverishly tries to do is to make sure that the Lynx is still there when these kids grow up enough to decide.